This is the fifth estate winning headlines, your media police post, brought to you by the Fort Hall School of Government coming to you from Nairobi, Kenya. In this segment, we summarize some of the headlines that you might have missed this morning, but we also take a look at the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Today is the 29th of November 2019 and I am 2J. I am 2M. And I am JM. Mm -hmm. In case you missed the headlines, here they are. Yep. In the Daily Nation, BBI, tough day for Ruto at Bomas. Mm. In the Standard, Raila wants MPs locked out of BBI. <laughs> and in the Star, BBI wants CSs to use public hospitals. Yeah. Still more BBI. So more BBI. As expected, uh, right? Analysis mm -hmm. from uh, the Bombers uh, uh, conference. Yes. Uh, you know, that happened on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what's happening here? Yeah. yeah. So Delination. Why Delination. was this a tough day? So BBI. BBI, tough day for Ruto at Bombers. Mm. And uh, yes, it was a tough day. I have been watching videos of William Ruto at Bombers of Kenya. Yeah. Raila walks into a room. William Ruto is standing. You know, when you are uh, children, I mm. mean, I'm not uh, still probably, uh, <laughs> in, in, in our teens, so you, 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 you'd go to, to nightclubs and the uh, bouncer would freeze you. Mm -hmm. uh, now, oh, that feeling. That feeling. Now, William Ruto looks like he was going to enter and then he was frozen. Yeah. Mm. And he was asked for his idea and he said, uh, <laughs> he said you no. just can't, 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 can't. Now, I'm sure he was looking into his pockets to see if he had like 200 bob to, 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 to give the bouncers. But let me tell you, yes, I think it was a bad day for him. Mm. But William Ruto should not have reacted the way he did, because he looked like he was sulking. Yeah, mm. that's true. And if, if, if at all he was sulking, then he would not be seen as graceful. Mm. I think he should have turned mm. this around, looked graceful, yeah. smile. Yeah. I mean, well, there were instances where jokes were being told and you see him visibly not laughing. Absolutely. I think, absolutely. as you're saying, the graceful thing to do is smile. Just even, smile. Yes. Even if you don't believe face? it, if yeah. you smile, your brain yeah. will believe you. Yes. Yes. However, yeah. I will say this. Yeah. You guys, I think I'm team DP right now. Mm. Wow, wow. You're feeling Honestly, sorry for him. I'm feeling so mm. sorry for him. Really, watching the videos of what took but like what went down on Wednesday, I'm really feeling like it's such disrespect how he's being treated. <laughs> it, 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 it was. But, and I, and I however, you were making the point that I uh, shouldn't fall for it. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, you, you know. Uh, Why are you putting you on the spot? <laughs> the fallout, I think, between the DP and the president seems quite real. Yeah. Um, but you never know. I mean, these are politicians. Politicians are. Mm. Um, you know, they're they, cunning. They, they're, they're cunning. Mm. They do very cunning things to each other. Yep. Yeah. And so, you yeah. know, this this usually tends to happen every so often. No, it tends it tends to happen. But let me tell you, William Ruto and, uh, and his his uh, friends, Mulkomen and Co. Mm. I think there was a better way to deal with this. Yeah. Mm. You see, if people see you as angry, I mean, politics is a game of seduction. Mm. Now, there is no way anybody would uh, test your temperament if yeah. they're not going to make you angry at some point. Mm. And yeah. Moy went through worse. Yeah, more, yeah, more used to say that James Munga used to pinch him. That's yeah. true. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Yeah. So what do we do with that headline? I, think I say we've, 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 me. Okay, we've got a three-part criteria before we yes. consider the next headline. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is the headline topical or speculative? Is it repetitive or groundbreaking? And finally, is it thoughtful or just plain lazy? Yeah. I think it's a good headline. I think it's accurate. He did yeah. indeed have a tough day. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So park it. Park okay, it. and in the standard, Ryla wants MPs locked out of BBI. So it is emerging <laughs> yes. um, that some MPs mm. want this process to go through uh, parliament. Yeah. <laughs> so they want BBI not to go to a referendum. Mm -hmm. Yes. They say that we can deal with this within within the house. Yes. Yeah. And these are mostly uh, parliamentarians allied to the deputy president. Mm -hmm. Yes. But uh, parliamentarians allied to Raila, um, allied to also the president, mm. are keeping their options open. open. They're saying, yes. you know what, let's not uh, limited to parliament. Yes. Let's also consider going for a referendum. referendum yes. Yeah. So I think there's a lot more at play yeah. that uh, is beginning to uh, to reveal itself Absolutely. regarding the, uh, the 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 backroom kind of politics going on. Yeah. About BBI. Yes. Yeah. You know, there seems to be some anxiety uh, from from some people that if this goes to the referendum, yes, uh, then they'll have little control over it. Uh, let, let, let me ask you guys a question. Now, Im imagine BBI is a business, right? It was founded one year ago, mm. and you you invested ten billion shillings in it. Of course, as a businessman, you would expect return on investment, yeah. ROI. Now, you as Rela Odinga, you have invested <coughs> in BBI mm -hmm. and you have uh, an outcome mm -hmm. or an expected outcome. Would you expect yourself to have, uh, to be, to, to, to have a, an, ex a, an executive presidency? 
would you? Mm -hmm. The uh, point is this. This man, there's somewhere he was going. Mm -hmm. he, there's a reason why he wants MPs not to pass yeah. the BBI. Mm -hmm. yeah. He wants mm -hmm. it to go to the ground. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, Punguza mm -hmm. showed us what happens when you try to take it through. That's the precise The point. county assembly, so yeah, yeah. possibly not the best route to take. Yes. As a headline? Uh, as a headline. Toss I think, it. I think, I think we toss it. Toss it. Toss right. that one. Yeah. Fair okay. enough. I, yeah. And then yeah. the star. Finally, the star. BBI wants CSS to use public hospitals. So it's actually quite an interesting story because of all the three headlines, this yes. one took a complete yes. just yeah. deviated. Yes. So in this story, they're saying that part of the BBI recommendations is mm. that CSS mm. should be required to use um, public hospitals and take their children to public schools. Yes. And so this is in an effort to kind of reduce this huge wage bill that we're seeing. Absolutely. So right now we're, say, we're seeing that they, um, they have a budget where they're able to access top-notch private hospitals, including yes. those overseas. Yeah. So they're saying that maybe as an incentive, if they're forced to use our public hospitals, yeah. one, they will see what they're not giving Kenyans, uh, and fantastic. that might give them an incentive to do better. Very and absolutely. the same as well for um, using private schools as opposed to using the public schools of the country. Very mm. good. I think mm. it's a great mm. idea. Very good. Mm. We have mm. been seeing footage out there of, uh, of ministers, or Nigerian ministers, going to Germany to seek treatment. Mm. We have seen a Congolese governor Mm. Uh, going to seek treatment in, mm. in or going in to France. shop in France, yeah. and they actually <laughs> hug them and beat them. So <laughs> how do you leave your people yeah. uh, getting third rate medical attention? Uh, attention. Meanwhile, and you go, you're, you're going to get first rate. I mm. mean, what are you, tell, what are you trying to tell us? Mm. And yeah. you're the minister. Mm. You should have a lot more confidence in your health system, mm. so that uh, we Kenyans can be like, like having so a restaurant true. owner and you cannot yeah. eat your own food. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. That doesn't yeah. inspire confidence. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you must eat your food. <laughs> However, as, as we know about a lot of the BBI recommendations. Uh -huh. I don't know if this is one that will actu actually come to pass. Yes. So yeah. I guess yeah, we'll yeah, 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 yeah. Is it a great so idea? It is. Yeah, part of the wish list. Yeah. Good, good idea. Let's see what comes of it. Yeah. So I would say headline. it's actually just for being speculative at the moment. Yes. Absolutely. We toss it. Yes. Yeah. So we give it to uh, the nation, don't Daily. we? Yes. Daily nation. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And also the political pieces that we call cartoons in this country. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also have a three-part criteria for this. Yes. Is the cartoon humorous or dry? Mm. Is it satirical or pessimistic? And finally, is it effective <laughs> or just plain lazy? This is a fantastic cartoon by Gado. Yeah. And it's a drawing of a satellite in space. Mm -hmm. mm. And that satellite has uh, two wings. <laughs> Actually, four wings. First wing is food security. Second wing is housing. Third wing is manufacturing. Fourth wing is universal health care. That sounds and like BBI. Sounds no, yeah. no, no, sorry. It sounds like uh, <laughs> Big Four. Big Four. Big four. Big four. And uh, now it's orbiting Earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Earth, there's a caption, and it says, Mission Control, an identified flying object detected seems to be lost in space. <laughs> That is uh, not a bad cartoon. Yeah, but it's, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, but it is also very pessimistic because essentially he's saying that the president's agenda of Big Four yeah. is lost in space. It, it's not yeah. grounded yeah. on yeah. Earth. There are two things here. Gado is either telling us he thinks that Big Four is is time bound. In my view, it is it is not. Yeah. I think it it transcends regimes. It, yeah. It transcends regimes. But also, let us also say, I mean, when have you heard of Big Four recently or any efforts to? I, I and know, I yeah. think that is part of what Godot mm, is questioning, much. right? I Absolutely. think the BBI um, event has completely overshadowed oh, any of the strides that yeah. Big Four would be making. Yeah. But as you were saying before, I think that's my biggest question. Mm. Who said that the Big Four is tied to Uhuru's tenure? Uh, no one. That's I don't a, think he yeah. ever said that. It's a very good question. Legacy can happen now. Legacy can happen tomorrow. It can happen in 10, yeah. 20 years. Yeah. So yeah. I think even whoever ends up being our next president could pick up the mantle and continue it. Absolutely. Kibaki launched Vision 2030. It is uh, now Ongoing. nine. Yeah. It is Still about okay. eleven years to Vision to, 2030. Uhuru uh -huh. uh, is now president. They will probably have Ruto as president in the next what three, four, five years. Mm. Six, seven, eight. It's going to transcend administrations. Yeah, yeah that's Absolutely. very true. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, okay, I think we put that in the parking bay. Put that in the parking bay. Well, we look at the star. The star. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now we have a dream of uh, is it kids or nurses or this is Kenyans? These are, the Kenyans. Kids are Kenyans, and Kenyans are busy with uh, what do you microscopes? Ma uh, magnifying glass. Magnifying glass. Uh, glasses. Yeah, yeah, not microscopes. You, what are you trying to? I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's what are you going? Magnifying glasses. Magnifying glasses. And they're trying to check out uh, BBI, mm -hmm. and behind them. Yeah, skeletons. And this is uh, depicting what's happening in West mm. Yeah, the uh, mudslides. Uh, about how many 43 people dead mm -hmm. out of mudslides, uh, major highways cut off, and yet country is focused on looking at a report. I think this is a little bit... Um, 
Is it a pessimistic? Pessimistic? Yeah, yeah. it's a little bit pessimistic. Yeah. But it's a country without a point. Although it would have, it, it would have been good if the president mm. made a statement at State House, you know, and uh, he, he, he actually has a written statement. But he, not, not a written statement. Yeah. Showed up. Yeah, and, showed you up know, and said something. Really uh, sh showed the country that we're in a time of mourning because of this yeah. uh, tragedy. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I think unfortunately there's so many things but that have been overshadowed by BBI. Yes, yeah. um, absolutely. But I guess if you know if the president is on an agenda, it tells you can't stop him. Kenyans are very political. Anything can mm. happen right now. Mm. People still think of Ruto, <laughs> Raila, and Uhuru. Yeah. It, it is just in our nature. Mm. So. All right, I think let's yeah. put that in. Can we, can we just toss it? Toss it. Yeah, let's toss, toss it. Let's toss that. Please. Yeah. Right. And what do we have in All the right, nation? Finally, in the Daily Nation. Daily Nation. We Ula. have caricatures of and the new babies. And uh, baby number one is El Gio Marquez Senator, Kipchumba uh, Mukome. This is so big. <laughs> and he has a baby uh, thing over here, mm -hmm. a flower. And next to him is baby Sonko. And uh, baby Sonko has a safety pin holding his nappy, yeah. and it's, it's red in color. Mm -hmm. And they are actually leaving their marks on the BBI launch They're program. They're making a mess. Now, this, I think, depicts the, the context of this is yeah. uh, the tidings both of them had mm -hmm. at the on BBI Wednesday. launch yeah. at, at, at Bomas. Yeah. Okay. Mukomen just went, and I don't know, why was he wagging his finger at the president? I think mm. there was a better way. I mean, I understood his concerns, okay. and they were valid. But he could have turned this, and he could have given a very good speech, and then take on Junaid and say, maybe Junaid should actually, as an MC, he's glad he's honing his skills, and let's hope that in the next five years he'll mm. be a better MC. Something of that nature. Yeah. And also, Sonko, there's no need of taking on the system at that place, because you... you how is she done uh, yeah, I mean, Sonko was angry. He said he was upset with how the organizers had put together the event, yeah. and that he hadn't been invited yeah. as, yeah, the, as, the, as the host as governor. As host governor. governor. Mm. You know, there's a, so they're saying in Swahili that whoever is Shindana Nandovo kwenda hoja kubwa. For mm. those that know English, will translate that. I don't want to, to say it. It basically says you cannot uh, compete with government going to the toilet. <laughs> yeah, I mean honestly, that's what, 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 what do we what do we say of this cartoon? I think I, it's, I mean, it's, a, funny, it, it's a funny cartoon. I'm sorry, I'm just noticing lots of details now. Mukomen yeah. with you know his fist and his yeah. shouting. I thought yeah. it was a funny democratic tantrums. I think I think this is our winning cartoon. Oh, we, we, give, we, give, we give it to, 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 <laughs> to dictated that. Let's give it. To oh, very well. So you're gonna toss out Ghana right, then? So toss yes. that. So we have a winning cartoon of the Daily Nation. And so, what is our final thought? And now, our final thought. It is inspired by a book entitled Goliath's Revenge, or as mm. Kenyans would like to say, Goliath's Revenge, by two authors. First oh. is called Scott Andrew, and the second is Todd Healing. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah, well done. I think you got a little bit. Uh -huh. I will say I'm enjoying sitting in the middle here. Now uh -huh. I see why you like to sit here. Uh -huh. Quite a position of power. Yeah. I'm not moving. <laughs> no, it's okay. Now, now, now you are you are non-executive prime minister. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Before we get into today's final thought, I think uh -huh. I'll just take us very quickly through this week. Yeah. So this week we were kind of looking at different kind of strategies that individuals, governments, people employ yeah. um, as they just go through <laughs> um, the world. Yes. So on Monday, we looked at The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek, right. where um, we looked at an infinite and a finite game, how you have certain um, rules in one game and no rules in another. You know the existence of the players, and there's an objective at the end of mm. a finite game, but not in an infinite game. Mm -hmm. And that leaders who are playing infinite games are more likely to find success. Yes. On Tuesday, we looked at Seeing Like a State by James mm. C. Scott. Yeah. And we asked why some of the world's utopian schemes, like the Ujamaa villages in Tanzania, the Great Leap Forward in China and some of the villages in Brazil yep. failed mm -hmm. and how their failure is very strange considering that they were in an effort to improve society. Yes. On Wednesday, um, you guys actually looked at Inadequate Equilibria mm -hmm. by Elisir Yudkowski. Yeah, Yudkowski. Yudkowski. And right. I told them you'd be able to pronounce this, this name. Oh, did I let you down? <laughs> no, Yudkowski. Yeah. Elisir Yudkowski. Yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. Yeah. So this book explored the central question <laughs> yeah. of when we can yeah. and cannot exploit system systematic um, efficiencies. Yeah. Um, and he begins to answer the questions of why some things in society are nowhere near as good as they should be. Yeah. And then yesterday we looked at Crowds <laughs> and Power by Elias Canetti. Yes which looks at a human paradox. Mm -hmm. um, how we have this desire for freedom and individuality, but at the same time we find the safety in crowds. Mm -hmm. And he explains how and why this happens and ways in which power is derived from this. Yes. And so today, just like you said, we're yes. going to look at Goliath's revenge. Yes. 
How Established Companies Turn the Tables on Digital Innovators. Mm -hmm. And this book is by Todd Hewlin and Scott Andrew Snyder, written in 2019. Mm -hmm. So the authors Hewlin and Snyder are both um, leaders in the fields of strategy, technology, and innovation. Mm -hmm. And they advise some of the world's biggest companies on how to grow in this new digital age. So uh, we're all familiar with the story of David and Goliath. I think yes. we've mm -hmm. actually talked about it in different iterations over the course of sitting on this table. Yeah. But we're also familiar with the story of how yeah. fallen corporate corporate giants mm. um, were slayed by very small looking timid startups. Yes. So we know the story of how Nokia lost to Apple, yes. how traditional taxis lost to Uber, yes. the hotel industry is losing to Airbnb, yes. Blockbuster lost to Netflix, yes. and Kodak lost to the digital um, camera innovations. Right. And so the question is, what undermined their ability to respond to the fast changing context of their industries? Mm. And some see it as poor strategy, Mm. arrogance that they were so secure of their position yeah. and a lack of flexibility and too much certainty in their legacy mm. and so we all know how th these stories ended right so Goliath didn't see the change coming yeah. and ever since then they um, these big companies have been playing catch-up to the Davids of today oh, yeah. so this book however takes a fresh look on the situation yeah. where these um, issues are now better understood. How did, how Goliath lost to David, we better understand how this happened. And it suggests that there's an alternative script mm -hmm. where these incumbents, these Goliaths, um, their strengths can be combined with the new startup strategies mm -hmm. to allow established companies to reinvent themselves. Mm -hmm. And so he says that there, right now we have established companies taking bold steps yes. to shift from being disrupted mm -hmm. to becoming disruptors. I think that was my favorite mm -hmm. sentence in the book. How yes. to shift from being disrupted to becoming <coughs> a disruptor yourself. yourself yeah. Yeah. And in this book, he delivers an insider's view on how industry um, leaders mm. like General Motors, NASA, the yes. Weather Channel, yes. MasterCard, Procter & Gamble, and so many more yes. are accelerating innovation, building new skills, and finding new ways to mm. become disruptors. Yes. And I would say the biggest lesson that I took away from this book yeah. Yeah. is the premise that older companies have the advantage of incumbency. Yeah. And yes. I think we talk about Absolutely. this all the time. I, I think I, they talk about I it, in, it in government, in presidency. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Government always has the advantage, advantage yes. and in this case with business, yes. they have the resources, they have the customer base, they Absolutely. have the historical memory Everything. that startups would kill to have. Yes. And so in this book, he's telling them how they can use their incumbent advantage yes. in order to become disruptors. Mm. Yeah. I love it. It's mm. all about fast mover advantage. Yeah. Mm. And he gives an uh, example of General Motors, yes. GM. So in 1996, they developed a car called the EV1, mm. right? And this was a fast world uh, modern electric car. All right, and uh, it was actually founded seven years before Tesla was founded, mm. and 16 years before Model S was actually founded by Tesla. Yeah. Mm. Now, EV1 was not that successful, it was actually a flop, but they did not stop there. It actually inspired a car, uh, a gas and electric car, let's call it the Chevy Volt, yeah. and they created this in 2010. Secondly, in 2016, they created, as an inspiration from EV1, a car called the Chevy Volt, but this one was fully electric. Oh. Now, this was in 2016. This car did so well, it performed so well, that in 2017, it won Car of the Year. But GM did not just stop there. Yeah. They actually went and ventured into that which they did not know, and that was in self-driving cars. So they bought a company known as Cruise Automation, all right? Mm. And they actually spent a billion dollars here. Now, Cruise Automation had 40 employees, each employee was valued at 25 million US dollars, mm -hmm. right? Wow. Now, GM then valued each of its employees at 300,000 US dollars, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, they also did not stop there. Mm -hmm. They went mm -hmm. and they put in 500 million USD mm -hmm. into a company that we all know is called Lyft. Mm -hmm. And this was a... Oh, it's, like, it's like Uber. It's like yeah, Uber. Taxi, so yeah. It's a taxi, so, mm -hmm. but you can actually share rides in one place. Ah, yes, 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 yes. Right? Now, at the time, which they, at the time they bought Lyft, Lyft was actually valued at 5.5 billion USD. Mm -hmm. Now, Google comes in and they invest about a billion USD, and the value of Lyft goes up to about $11 billion. Mm -hmm. GM, in essence, made twice as much in under two years, mm -hmm. yeah. right, in profits. Now, GM is actually valued at about, right now, about $140 billion. Mm -hmm. Their stock price from 2016 has shot up about 50%, mm -hmm. just because of uh, how they have uh, grown. But 
there are three things here, and they say GM's Goliath revenge is based on three factors, mm -hmm. and I want to name them. The first is using institutional memory, institutional knowledge of what the ball is known. Yeah. Now, GM was first to create, and that's why I said first move, uh, first move advantage, to create the first electric car. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second, GM invested heavily in the future of self-driving cars. Mm -hmm. This was not an area they had known, yeah. so they placed their bets. Yep. But yeah. also, because the first two categories are of uh, people who own cars, the, the third category is that they made bold bets on people who did not own cars mm -hmm. and now that is Lyft. Yeah. Yeah. And now Lyft, they, people share cars and it works like Uber. Mm -hmm. But what they're actually doing is they're going across the spectrum, owners and non-owners. Yeah. So yeah. as long as it is a car and they can see they the future want to be there. and all platforms, technological yeah. platforms, they have invested across the board. And I think oh. in this case, um, GM is considered a Goliath yes. because it's one of the oldest car making companies mm, in the US, I think mm. in the world in general. Mm, precisely. However, they yes. had nearly gone bust yes. and they had to be bailed out by the US government. Absolutely. And yeah. I think a lot of the decisions that they made, you know, transforming what you're calling the spectrum, yes. is because they saw yeah. the Ubers of the world, the yes. Lyfts of the, the world, world, Teslas, you yes. know, kind of moving into this new digital innovation yes. era. And they said, how can we inch our way into that so we don't get left behind? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Got it. Speaking of digital, the digital era that we're living in, yeah. um, also in this book, the authors address what they call the pre-digital age <coughs> and the post-digital uh, age, yes. which we're currently living in. Right. And um, and what he does, in fact, uh, at this point, if we could just get the graph up yeah. Right, yeah. To, yeah. To, to show this comparison. Mm -hmm. So uh, on, the, on the one side, you've mm -hmm. got the ordinary bell curve, mm -hmm. yes. where being average mm -hmm. as a company or even as, a, uh, as an individual in a company yes. was okay. You, know, yes. you could get by yes. throughout your career. Mediocrity. Yes. You, precisely, just being average, <laughs> yeah. just, you know, doing the yeah. bare minimum. Yeah. And even as a company, yeah. you could, you know, you, 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 you really could just be average and, yes. and and still make good profit margins and all that yes. kind of stuff. Yeah. But we're now living in a post-digital age, a, an age of a lot of um, kind of revolution in yes. how business is being conducted, Absolutely. how technology is being onboarded. Innovations. Yes. And the challenge here now yeah. is, is in, and what he's telling us is you can't afford to be average any longer. And yes. that's shown on this graph, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, you, you can't. So that's that's the, the dip right in between. Yes. So you've got the digital have-nots and yes. the digital have -nots. Yes. And so the companies which attempt to um, stick to the to, to the status quo and the way that they've been doing things, yes. those companies are not likely to succeed, yeah. and Absolutely. they will uh, definitely be you yes. know uh, you know uh, left behind, left behind, yeah, left behind yes. by these digital haves who are coming up and revolutionizing yeah. the space. <coughs> and so one um, area in which uh, he challenges companies to keep. Mm -hmm innovating in is, yes. is data yes uh, and he says yeah. uh, the companies should seize algorithmic advantage yes and by that he means the ability of the company to capture manage analyze and systematize the most data from customers and clients absolutely and you know basically once you've captured that data then mm. also um, find a way to make it valuable yeah. Yeah. for clients yes. for customers to serve your customers better yeah. yes uh, there's an interesting story here of yes. Google and yeah. why Google succeeded mm. um, and and he says and this is an excerpt from the book uh -huh. yeah. Google was not the first search engine yes. but it was the first one with two world beating algorithms yes mm. and by the way you might think an algorithm them is a complicated thing yes. but an algorithm is simply a set of instructions to resolve a well-defined mm -hmm. problem yes like so a recipe. a recipe for example okay. to bake a banana cake is yes. a recipe yes. is, 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 is an algorithm yeah. right yes uh, because you you know you so your problem there is the cake and, the banana. and then the ingredients yeah. are the steps that you will take yeah. Yeah. To, uh, to, to make that cake to, to make that cake mm -hmm. and it's that simple yeah so um, this was the key to Google's success at the very beginning. Yeah. First, they had PageRank, which yes. organized the world's information in a unique way. Yes. It counted how many other websites linked to a given website. Mm -hmm. And the more likes uh, there were, the more valuable uh, page uh, that PageRank thought the website might be, mm -hmm. and the higher it featured in search, in search results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Google's search results yeah. were simply better than those of people like Yahoo, mm -hmm. InfoSeek, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Yes. Um, and second, AdWords. Yes. If you recall, this was an innovation uh, as well from Google. Mm -hmm. It contained an algorithm that effectively auctioned attention online to the highest bidder. Yes. <laughs> the price of your paid link showing up on the right-hand side of the search window was set dynamically based on supply and demand. Mm. Yes. So that's if you own a company, mm. uh, that's one way that you can 
you know, uh, remain on top yeah. uh, and keep, you know, actually take down the Goliaths of this world mm -hmm. I, I, by seizing algorithmic advantage. Yeah. Beautiful. Data. Beautiful. You know, there's a lesson for our uh, our banks here because, in, in fact, they should read this book. You see, no, not Kenyan banks, foreign banks. You see, uh, before the 90s, early 2000s, mm -hmm. the biggest banks in this country were foreign owned. They all had headquarters in London yeah. or, or whatever. They were all foreign owned. But then there was an innovation that, uh, and actually across the region, if you go to Kinshasa, if you go to Tanzania, they actually went and asked the people who are not banked then whether they needed bank accounts. Mm. And before you actually needed a minimum balance to open a bank account, yeah. now they said as, as little as 1,000 bob or 2,000 bob, you can actually, actually open a bank account. Mm. Now, what actually happened was systematically, the lower banks, the Kenyan banks that were down the bottom of the pyramid, yeah. they're coming up because they went and were able to fish and collect mm -hmm. such a huge basket the of mm. the masses. Now you have your equities, you have your KCB, you have your cooperatives, mm. totally outshining the Barclays, Standard Chartered and City Bank. Yeah. Yeah. But it's because the of lines. innovation. Yep. Now the guys who had first move advantage were the backlists and the standard charted yeah. and you know yeah. uh, they get the point. Sleeping through the, the revolution. Lions revenge, that's yes. so true. So yeah. on a day where okay. we had a winning cartoon and a winning headline from the Daily Nation, yes. I will leave you with a quote. We learn from the short and remarkable life of Jesus Christ oh. that the golden life is to make history, not to preserve history. Mm. So go out there and make some history. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. <coughs> Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We are also on your TV screens. Find us on Pang, Free to Air, Go TV, and Star Times. Have a good weekend. <laughs>